Aspire College of Excellence. Modern way of learning classical Islam. Today we have uh, Shaykh. Alhamdulillah, it was personal ex experience for everyone to have a direct conversation with this Shaykh and listen to this Shaykh directly. Alhamdulillah. So we must go to the Shaykh for learning Arabic language. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fikum Shaykh for this one. So let me introduce a few things about Shaykh. Shaykh, we Abdul Rahim, he has major in English literature, English language and literature from the University of Madras in 1957. Along with that, he has MPhil and PhD degree from University of Azhar, Egypt in 1964. Shaykh has a long journey in teaching Arabic language. Sheikh is a professor. Sheikh was a professor for 30 years at Islamic University Medina since 1969. And Sheikh authored one of his masterpieces, Durusul Al Arabiya, non popularly known as Throughout the World Medina Arabic Books. I hope every student will have this book in his journey of Arabic language. Alhamdulillah. So he is a director of the Institute teaching Arabic at Medina University and served as a professor of Arabic in Medina University and Islamic Institute of Umay Darman Sudan in which we are affiliated to as well and they are giving PhD, Masters and Bachelors from there. And Sheikh has been into Arabic Institute of Germany, Washington DC and British Guiana. And currently Sheikh is the Director of Translator, Translation Center at King Fahd Doris Quran Printing Complex, Medina, Saudi Arabia. So now we have the translation of Quran in many languages. So thanks to Sheikh as well for his contribution. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept his ikhlas, his sincere amal for this one. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Barakallahu Fikum. I welcome Sheikh once again on the behalf of Aspire College and our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Salam Madani, and all our students and management team. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Without taking ado, I'll be. Authority to Sheikh now will continue. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a great pleasure for me to participate in this meeting of the students of Aspire College of Excellence and their parents who are also participating in this function. I sincerely thank the director of the college, Sheikh Abdul Salam Al Madani, for inviting me to participate in this meeting and providing me with an opportunity to speak to the students especially and their parents on educational issues and especially on the issue of teaching Arabic and learning Arabic in India. As you all know <clears throat> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom chose Arabic to be the language of his final and eternal message, the glorious Quran. It is also the language of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, the Sahabas, radiyallahu anhum, and all the early fathers of Islam who all spoke Arabic. 
and thus Arabic became the language of the corpus of Islamic knowledge and all the important and great works of Islamic sciences, Islamic studies were all written in Arabic and that is why acquiring a knowledge of Arabic is an important subject for students of, uh, of Islamic studies. Alhamdulillah, I'm told that the college offers Arabic as a subject and <clears throat> uh, I hope inshallah they will all learn the language and master the, the language and become important scholars of Arabic inshallah in future. I have been associated with the teaching of Arabic for more than 50 years in different places, in different capacities. But the great work that I did was in the Islamic University of Medina, where I was in charge of the program of teaching Arabic as a foreign language for student, teaching students who joined the university but have no previous knowledge of Arabic in their countries or they have some knowledge of Arabic that is not enough to enable them, enable them to carry out, to carry on the, the class lectures, to understand the lectures in the university classes. So I was associated with this and <clears throat> there was no book that was being taught to the students who were studying in this class. When I joined it about, about eight to ten years after the university started functioning. So I was uh, forced to write a book and teach this book that is now known as the Rasulullah al Arabi al Ghayr Natiq That's the book I wrote to teach the students of what was known in those days as Shurabatul Lughat al Arabi al Ghayr Natiq That is a department of teaching Arabic as a foreign language, the university. <coughs> there are three or four methods of, methods of teaching Arabic that are prevalent in different parts of the world and also in India. One is, especially in India, teaching the classical grammar books like Ibn Malik's uh, Alpiya, like Al-Mufassal, the Maqshari's Al-Mufassal, and the other famous book, al Ajrumiya, uh, which is a small book, but it's very famous. Uh, this is one method. This is mostly followed in India, Pakistan, and the Indian subcontinent. And uh, the other, nowadays, I see in the internet, a lot of uh, programs internet programs of teaching Arabic in different places. They all call this program uh, Arabic grammar. In Urdu they call it Arabic grammar. I don't know why they call it grammar instead of grammar. Now this is not a very uh, suitable program 
because no language, no living language follows this method, teaching grammar as a subject, as, a, as an independent subject. Grammar is an application. Grammar is applied, grammar is being taught. That is known. But teaching as a subject, as a complete and independent subject, is something new, which is followed only in the Indian subcontinent. The second method which is followed in India is teaching books, imported books from Arab countries, especially from Saudi Arabia. Now, as a rule, books written for native speakers are not suitable for non-native speakers. Because the native speakers know most of the language. They know a lot of words, they know a lot of grammar rules. So these things are foreign to a foreign student, a student who is not a native speaker of the language. For example, books written for English people, for British students to teach English it is not suitable for teaching Indian students or Pakistani students or Arab students. In the same way teaching Arabic, I have seen in some parts of, in some schools in India, they are teaching, they were teaching books from Saudi Arabia. The student, you know, has to write the meaning of every word. He doesn't know every word is new for him. He has to write these words, meaning of these words in the book. So, and he gets fed up with the, with the course and leaves it and then drops out. So, it's not a very uh, suitable, uh, healthy uh, method to teach uh, Arabic using books written for the native speakers of Arabic. The third method is uh, teaching Arabic using readers like my book, which is a reader. Reader means a book where subjects have been, the great experts of the language, experts of the language, you know, the ins and outs of the language, they write lessons. And each lesson is based on a particular grammar rule. Uh, and uh, the students are taught the grammar rule indirectly. They are not said, they are not told that this is such and such grammar. But the student learns these uh, patterns uh, through analogy. He builds up sentences. For example, this is Hada Kitabun, Wahada Kalabun. He understands this and then he builds up sentences like this Hada, for example, Hada Kalbun, Wahada Kitu. So this is by an analogy. But for analogy, you must provide chances of analogy, opportunity for the students to make analogy. So words should be of the same nature, the same class. That's how a student can make analogy. Now I have, as I told you, I have worked in this field for a very long time and I have seen students from different parts of the world at the Islamic University. At the Islamic University, there were students from different parts of the world speaking different languages. People spoke languages I did not know. I knew some of these languages, but I did not know all the languages. But that is why I, when I designed the book, I designed, in, designed it in such a way that the students who do not know my language or the language of the, his, his friends and classmates, they will be able to understand this, the, the lessons. So it was designed in such a way that no uh, second language is needed. <clears throat> uh, so this is a very useful method using what is known as applied grammar, not direct grammar, but applied grammar. Uh, unfortunately, in India and Pakistan, 
this method of applied grammar teaching is not is not uh, followed. They teach direct teaching direct grammar as an independent subject, and uh, the result is not very really encouraging because I have taught the Islamic University. I've seen students. I saw students coming from different parts of the world, especially from Africa and places like America, South America, uh, Japan, China. In these places, there is no chance for them to learn Arabic. But they learn Arabic very easily. And whatever use it. I asked the student from Africa, once I asked the student, I not alam talarabi, I very good learn Arabic. And he said, ما عندنا مدارس ما عندنا مدارس ما عندنا مدرسون ولكن أخ درس في الجامعة الإسلامية كان يأتي وكنا نجتمع تحت شجرة وكنا نتعلم منه. But he said, we don't have schools, we don't have teachers, but there was a, a student who learned Arabic, who studied Arabic at the Islamic University of Medina. And he used to come to us, and we used to sit down under a tree, and he used to teach us. So he could speak. He could speak, and he could uh, make me understand whatever he wants to say. But people coming from India and Pakistan, from these places, they are not able to speak. <clears throat> the, method, the, 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 the reason is the method which is being taught, which is grammar. Uh, the independent subject being taught in the classes. Uh, there are certain things which are not in Arabic grammar, but they have been invented in India. For example, what is known in Arabic as Isnad al fail Isnad al fail that is using pronouns with the word. They have been made into a table which is known as Gardan in Urdu. Fa'ila, fa'ila, fa'ilu, fa'ila. Now, this is a great enemy of, enemy of Arabic. It's a great enemy of Arabic. No country uses it. No Arabs use it. It has been invented by India. It doesn't help people. It doesn't help. Because it has got 14 pronouns. And to find out the correct pronouns from the 14 pronouns is very difficult. I have seen many people. They make mistakes in this. But if you learn each pronoun separately, for example, you say, Zahaba Bilalun Ilal Masjidi. Zahaba Bilalun Ilal Masjidi. Zahabat Amina, or Zahabat Amina to, or Zahabat Zawjatuhu Ilal Madrasati. The student will learn. Zahaba for masculine, Zahabat for feminine. You need not tell him this, but he himself, if you use the, the structure of the sentence in such a way that you have masculine and feminine. So we say, Zahaba Bilalun in al Masjidi, or Zahabat Zawjatuhu, or Zahabat Aminatu, or Zahabat Bintuhu, Ila al Madrasati. The student will understand. If you ask him, did you find a uh, pattern in these two sentences? He will think and say, yes. I, I, I see a pattern. I think Rahaba is for man and Rahabat is for feminine. That's what we want. If the, the student is able to deduce the rule by himself, he will never forget it. In the, in the same way, if we say Hava Bilalun, Wahadihi Aminatu, for example, and ask the student, do you see a pattern here? He will say, yes. I think Hava is for man. And have he is for, for a woman. And that's what we want him to understand. And then we say, Hada Bilalun, Hada Muhammadun, Hada Aliyun, Hada Hamidun. And then we say, Hada he Zainabu, Hada he Fatima too, Hada he Aisha too. And ask him, Do you find a pattern? He will say, I think, yes, there is a pattern. You say for, for masculine, there is tanween, there is the noon ending at the end of the noun. You say, Hadha Bilalun. But you say, Hadi Zainabu, there is no tanween there. 
based on noon sound. So it seems that for masculine, you say uh, Bila Alun, which is Tanwin, and for a uh, feminine, you say Zainabu, which is Tanwin. Now, this is a very, uh, very important rule and very difficult rule, but you can easily explain this. Not you don't explain the student by juxtaposing these two words in a particular manner. Uh, the student is able to deduce the rule by himself. So this kind of uh, program, which helps the student uh, use his analogy and deduce rules, is very important. And the students will never forget whatever he, he has deduced himself. So it will remain with him for, for always. Uh, these are the, <clears throat> the second important thing in teaching uh, in Arabic is that uh, there should be student participation. It should be interactive. The teacher explains certain things and then sits down. Then the students get up and they ask each other. So the students' participation is very important because people say, experts say, that one learns a language by speaking. One learns a language by speaking. You know, we all learned our language, not by grammar. We learned our language by, by listening to our mothers and fathers and our brothers and sisters and the people in the community, that is how we learn the language. And everybody learns the language in this way. So uh, Arabic should also be made, the students should be made to learn to, to talk. But to talk, you know, not independently. There should be a program in which certain words are taught to him, certain patterns, grammatical patterns are taught to him. And then he uses these patterns and these vocabulary, they use these words, and make sentences by himself. So it should be a restricted atmosphere where he's able to use his language skills. See, <clears throat> I'll give an example. Uh, for example, there is a man who wants to learn driving. Wants to learn driving. He doesn't join a uh, driving school. But, you know, he gets books, very important books, very uh, costly books about driving. And he has a marker, he reads and highlights some important points in the, in the book. And after one month, he has not so far got into a car. After one month after reading the book, he gets into a car and then straight away drives his car to a main road. And you all, you will all agree with me that he is going to make a very dangerous, uh, meet a dangerous accident in the, in the road. Because driving is a skill, we call it in English, skill, mahara in Arabic. So driving is a skill. There are two, two types of knowledge. One is science. Mathematics is a science. Physics is a science. Uh, chemistry is a science. Medicine is a science. And these sciences are, uh, they need study. They need lectures. They need books to be read. The second type of knowledge is a skill. A skill may involve a little bit of reading, a little bit of lecture. But the main important point for a part of the skill learning is practice. By practice, you can learn typewriting. By practice, you can learn you know, driving and piloting. All these things you know, need practice. The, these uh, skills don't, do not need uh, lectures. So uh, language is a skill. The more you speak, the more you learn. 
but you know learning should be in restricted atmosphere uh that's the very important uh, aspect of learning a language so first of all there should be uh student participation student participation and before that the book you know the expert will write it should have what i call taqdeem al usul ala al furu taqdeem al usul al usul ala al furu that is teaching the primary elements before teaching the secondary element teaching the primary element before teaching the secondary element for, for example you know the <clears throat> masculine is the primary element all the rules of the language are designed to in, in keep keeping in mind the masculine so you learn mudarrisun for feminine is a you act toward the end you don't say mudarrisun is the primary thing and then if you want to make masculine you drop the top no you learn the masculine they turn you learn the feminine in the same way bama <clears> pata <throat> kasra these are the primary endings uh, arab endings da ja al talib right to taliba sallam to sallam ta al talibi the primary endings then you have what other endings like sallam ta al zainab do you learn it later you do not mix if you get you, if you mix them together masculine regular masculine the stone masculine plural muslim una and sanam if you get mix them all together the student will not be able to make analogy for analogy it needs that things should be of the same nature the same type <clears throat> so you teach in each subject in a lesson one type of ending first of all when you then the uh, the first primary ending you teach in the secondary ending and then another set secondary ending later on in the third subject third lesson uh, in in that way the student will be able to uh, make analogy <clears throat> another very important thing in teaching arabic stay arabic is the, there is a difference between Uh, the teaching of the arabs and the teaching of the non arabs arabs they say hada kitab hada qalam the drop the final ending it's called waqf we use waqf in the quran alhamdulillah rabbil alamin we don't say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin in the quran it's the important thing but in the teaching arabic at the teaching stage we must suspend the rule of waqf we teach hada kitab hada qalam you know the the student will not learn later on some people say you teach them without the uh, grammar endings the declination and then within 5 minutes i can teach them all the endings this nonsense is not uh, such possible so from the beginning the students should learn the endings that is why most of the arabs not most but many of the arabs do not know the correct grammatical endings because they are taught by stopping the by removing the final vowel uh, that is the what is called the waqf mode waqf mode hada kitab hada qalam wo yadhhab wo lam yadhhab yadhhab and lam yadhhab both are the same they do that the, then it, uh, for example the masculine and feminine if you say man ant man ant for a man ya bint man ant ya rajul man ant he doesn't know but if you say man anta or man anti he learns the difference between man anta masculine anta feminine anti and then <clears throat> masmuk masmuk we say with, without the ending the student will not learn that masmuka is for masculine the fatha and masmuki for a woman with kasra uh, 
So from the beginning, I will tell you a story. <clears throat> a student of mine who was uh, doing his PhD, PhD in Arabic. I was my, his guide. So once he wrote something, he writes, he shows me. So it was, he wrote, Masajidan. I said, my, my, my brother, you are a PhD student, and you make such a mistake, very serious mistake. He said, what is the wrong, what, what is the mistake here? What is wrong here? I said, you say Masajidun, or Masajidun. So what is wrong? He doesn't know this. He said, Masajid is Mamno Manasak. He said, why Mamno Manasak? Because it is so most of these things, you know, they, even though he belongs to the faculty of Arabic language, he did not know this. Because they teach without the endings. Hazi Masaji, it's a Hazi Masaji. You will not be able to understand it. It's a Mamno Minasab. It's a Hazi Masaji do. You will understand that it is. From the beginning, you know, the students, whatever they learn in the first, for the first time, it remains with them. And uh, if you teach them wrong, it will be it will not be possible for for him to learn the new thing. There are many things you know I learned them wrong in the I mean as a child, and even today I make these mistakes. Even though I know it is wrong, but I make mistakes. Yes, uh, everything you ever will do this. Uh, third thing, <coughs> I said first of all, uh, teaching the primary ending, the primary elements of the language before teaching the secondary elements of the language. Secondly, not using the walk mode, not using the walk mode. <coughs> third is, in the grammar books, ancient grammar books and all, the examples are so difficult, they, they don't belong to our, our, our life, our, you know, environment. Sentences, words which are not used in, in our locality. So we should use sentences, examples which belong to our locality, our environment, and you can easily understand, and the, the example should be very simple. <coughs> Unfortunately, in those days, they were slave and all, you know, society had slaves. Many of the examples, Ishtaraitul Abda Nisfahu. Ishtaraitul Abda Nisfahu. Now, first of all, the students will not understand this. Secondly, there is a problem uh, of, with regard to buying slaves and all. So we must use, for example, you say the example of Badal, Badal or Baal, Akal to Khubza, Nisfahu. Simple, it belongs to your, your uh, lifestyle. Akal to Dajajata, Nisfaha, something like that. <coughs> Another uh, difficulty with them in the grammar books is they want to use plural. Zaidun always is there. Fama Zaidun Zaidun Fama. The student knows only this sentence. Then the grammarians, when they want to make plural, they don't say, Mathalan, Ar Rijalu Jau, Zaidun Ja, Ar Rijalu Jau. If they say Ar Rijalu Jau, see, students will understand very easily. They don't use this. They say, Ar Zaiduna Jau. First of all, there are two problems. First problem is that as Zaidun, Zaid, the proper name, when it is made plural, it becomes common and it should take alif lam. Zaidun jaa, but as Zaiduna jaa with, with alif lam. Hindun jaat, al hindatu jaa jina. That is another problem. So the students will not understand why you say as Zaidun. Why do you say al hindat? Well, first of all, you have to explain to them this thing. Uh, secondly, 
you don't find in normal life three people having the same name zaid 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 it's unnatural so something very clear will be zaid un ja zaid un wa ali un hamid un ja understand zainab ja'at zainab wa khadija wa aisha tu jina everything should be clear and the example should be should belong to our lifestyle <clears throat> and uh, another important fact is fragmentation of a long rule or a complicated rule for example the mamnu man asar it has got uh, it's a very difficult subject and also it's a very long drawn subject it has got in grammar books it is very in the complex discussion once i taught this in the islam university medina when i was teaching i taught it in two classes two hours there was a bengali student he said no 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 this is not right we took two months to learn this no 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 sir it took us two months and the teacher has taught us in two hours you know he has left out some this thing so it's, it's a long uh, problem so i have in my book i have fragmented it so whenever there is a need for example women's name is very important women's name because it is a lesson is a ja muhammadun ja zainab it's very important so for some all it started feminine names ja zainab khadija so in a second lesson another lesson i used foreign proper names like william like uh for example johnson london or pakistan foreign proper names they are also very important we have to use them in our life so pakistan or london or washington or william america so uh, fragmentation of a long uh, rule we choose from the long rule uh, complex rule things which are important to us in different subjects and uh, for example in our akhawat i did not teach them all of at once in one lesson no in the first of all and then secondly i taught anna and the fourth lesson i taught later later come at the beginning at the end so fragmentation of the mamnu man sab also zainab wa khadija to in the first and second lesson but means in the it comes at the end of the book means i know that concentration i put at the end of the end of the book zahabtu zahabtu ila ahmad zahabtu ila abbas wa zahaba akhi ila ahmad so then it is becomes easy because he has already known i'm no minister did it name and then when he learns this uh, in majrur form it's very easy for him to learn it. so these are some of the important uh, principles i have used in my book and uh, i believe that uh, these methods have uh, have borne fruit and the students find it very easy to learn the arabic language in this method when you are language is easy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa laqad yassamna al-qur'an lidhikr and the kid they have made allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says we have made arab quran easy wa laqad yassarna al quran we have made arabic easy wa hal min lidhikr wa remembrance wa hal min mudhakir is there anyone who wants to remember so when the quran is easy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy the language of the quran by quran it follows that it also should be easy even the book is easy the language of the book should also be easy so it's a easy language but it should be 
placed or taught uh, presented in a easy manner also so that's how i i followed this principle in this book uh, <clears throat> There are seven students, seven people who got wrong ideas, wrong ideas. And there's a once a student came to me, American student, and uh, he did not know Arabic, so he was in the put in the first level. Hada kitabun, hada kitabun. So I was teaching probably. He got up, he was very angry, very angry. He said, "I have not come to learn these silly things. So, what do you want to learn?" I asked him. I, I said, what do, you, "What do you want? What do you want to learn?" He said, "I have come to learn mutum. Mutum means any old books, you know, like Ibn Malik and all. How can he learn Ibn Malik when he doesn't know Alif and Ba? The difference between Alif and Ba, he doesn't know. He has learned nothing of Arabic, but he says he wants to learn mutum." So these are uh, wrong ideas uh, which people have. Mutun have the same things. You can learn mutun, but later on, first of all, you should have the language to understand the mutun. Mutun, for example, if you start learning Ibn Malik, some people you know say start start away straight away to go to Ibn Malik. Allah Muhammadun wa Ibn Malik. You will not understand because he, is, he doesn't know Arabic. So first of all, you must learn the language and then go to Mutun. And uh, Mutun <coughs> uh, uh, has uh, many things which are new, of course, and uh, he will benefit, of course, definitely he will benefit. But you know, first of all, you must have the language which enables him to understand the Mutun. <coughs> uh, so these wrong ideas, uh, I, I, this is another story I'll tell you. Two students from China, Chinese students, came to Medina. One of them, his certificates enabled him to join the Islamic University. The other had probably did not have the certificate necessary to join the university. So he was uh, put in a school which is. Uh, under the Islamic University governance, it's called Darul Hadith. Darul Hadith was a secondary school, but it was looked after by the Islamic University. So he was made to join this Darul Hadith. After two weeks, this student who was in Darul Hadith came to visit. His friend, who is in the Islamic University in Medina, in the language section, I was teaching when this man came. I asked him who he was, and he said he has come to see his friend. So he came. Now his friend, who is in, the, in, in my class, was able to speak Arabic, not in, I mean, anything in Arabic, but you know, what learned he can speak. He can make himself understood in Arabic. Now, this student who was in Darul Hadith, he had a notebook. I asked him to see. He showed me the notebook. He showed me the notebook. It had three, four words: Min, Yadul Ala, Bidaya, Ila, Yadul Ala, Nihaya, something like. No sentence, nothing of use, only these kind of things. You know. In India, they, they teach Huruful Huruful Jabbawa Tawaka, I don't remember this, 17. By memorizing this, you don't learn Arabic. You have to learn each half jar separately and how to use it. That's how you learn the language. This is by memorizing. You know, words, mem memorizing words does not help you learn the language. You no, know, these are some of the important ideas about learning the language I've shared with you. 
and I hope you have benefited from these ideas. And inshallah, you will make use of them in your learning and teaching. Thank you.